All right, what's up, people? I'm here with the cat. What are you doing, Meow Meows? Anyways, my hair's fucking crazy. But who gives a damn, right? Uh, I've been sleeping. That's <laughs> like on, on my pillow. So, uh, anyways. Uh, this fucking shit over the VR on Xbox is really blowing my goddamn mind. So, uh, one, Microsoft is all in on mixed reality. Uh, they spent quite a bit of money on uh, HoloLens. I don't know how people keep on forgetting about HoloLens. Uh, so their baskets are in mixed reality. Uh, virtual reality is, is a non-starter until Fiverr comes out fully full immersion virtual reality. Uh, otherwise, it's just limited. You're cutting yourself off from the world. Uh, with you know, it's cool for short, interesting titles, and I I laud Sony for for taking that chance and putting it out. Uh, but clearly, Microsoft is not interested in uh in VR and I don't see why people are upset that Microsoft isn't interested. People aren't asking for it on the Xbox. I mean that would be technically wrong. There are people asking for it, but the majority of people don't give a fuck. Uh most people don't care. And a hundred million uh consoles sold, four point some million, uh four percent isn't worth uh the money it would be one thing had Microsoft solidified, solidified their uh, their position in the council market spot, but uh, I just don't think it's worth it uh, for Microsoft to spend money on uh, on VR right now. Um, because even if they support it, let's say uh, I saw one person say, even why don't they support third party? Well. That's fucking kind of crazy. I'm going to have to deal with that before I go to work. Um, it's like I got a horn. You know those fucking Japanese... Uh, the anime where there's the guy with like the big puff on the top of his head from the like 80s. Uh, so anyways, I'm reading this. And it's driving me fucking crazy. Microsoft is all in on mixed reality. It's hollow lens. Uh... They clearly uh, are not interested in going the way of VR. Uh, they support VR on PC, but it's one thing to support something on PC and a completely another thing to support something on a console. If something's a little janky on the PC, uh, the, the headset developer, the HMD developer, uh, will maybe issue a patch. Uh, maybe Microsoft will tune up DirectX 12 or whatever fucking piece of software. Uh, whatever API they're using, okay? On the Xbox, if you release and support a piece of hardware uh, and first party is not supporting that shit, it's dead in the water. And uh, if Microsoft is not interested in it, I don't I don't see any reason uh, for, for them to even waste the time or the effort or the money because man hours have to be spent on it. Let's say uh, they do do it. Uh, let's say they support the HMD displays that they have for PC. They're pretty cheap. Uh, good price, uh, good value add, about 200 bucks. Get a, a the head mount display and uh, two controllers, the, the, the wireless controllers. Uh, let's say they didn't support that on the Xbox One. And... Uh, they support it and some games work or some games use it. All right. So a, a developer comes out. He says, all right, uh, here's my game. It's a VR game. All right. So Microsoft then has to certify that game, that VR game to work on the Xbox. Um, and uh, that's extra. That's an extra team that's working on it. Because I'm assuming that most of these games... Uh, will require uh, Microsoft's got to have the APIs out there. They've got to support it uh, software-wise on their on their hardware. Uh, then they've got to have a team to certify the 
the hardware. And then if it's just trash, you know, because the guy just wanted to, you know, the company was just porting over something, you know, to make a quick buck or whatever the hell, uh, that, that fucking goes bad on them. It's just the fucking, uh, to me, I would like it, but I only want it if, uh, fucking Microsoft is all in. What was that? Oh, just, I smashed my finger a piece of my, it's kind of nasty, but whatever. Uh, I just don't, I, I would like it, but if Microsoft's not all in on it, I don't want it. And clearly they, they're not interested in doing it. Uh, even if they seem to have been at one point, uh, they don't, don't, I would prefer. So here's the conundrum. Damned if they do, damned if they don't. Had they come out and said, oh, we're going to spend, uh, we're spending $100 million developing this head-mounted display. It's going to be wireless, and it's going to cost more because they weren't doing anything wired, okay? There's going to be no wired. If they did an HMD display, it was going to be wireless. Um, th that adds cost. It adds a lot of cost to the, to the device. Uh, so... Let's say they did release one. It'd probably be four hundred bucks, maybe five hundred. Uh, it'd have to come with the controllers. Um, that's the count. That's doubles the price of a console. You're buying a console and you're buying this, this, this uh, VR display. Then they've got to support it. That means they've got to have their first party teams instead of working on new IP that everybody's fucking crying about. Or fucking new AAA titles that everybody's fucking crying about. They have to then work on VR experiences, and not great VR experiences, right? Because you've got to you've got to get your feet wet. You got to learn to end it and out. They don't have a VR team. I think they got fucking uh, a couple a couple uh, developers have some uh, experience with VR, I believe. Um, oh, I'm trying to think which which team actually did a VR game, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, so you don't have a ton of VR experience on the team. Uh, so you got to learn, you're going to hire new people. Uh, you got to have, uh, it's just a fucking ton of man hours. I'd rather they spend the money man hours on, uh, new games for us to play. And I don't know why anybody would, uh, they've, they've got the money to do both. Of course they do. But understand that uh, Xbox doesn't get to access every single penny that Microsoft has, right? They've got a budget they have to work within. Uh, they don't get to freaking use the trillion dollars fucking worth that the company is, okay? They got a budget. They've got to work within that budget. And I'd rather they use that that budget, which includes a bunch of man hours, and they they focus on uh, building games, new games, new IPs. Uh, Outer Worlds needs a sequel. Outer World needs some DLC. Outer World needs an update. So it's a new game plus mode that would be really nice. So you can go in and maybe play all the options. Um, uh, you know, every time you go in, maybe you get two more fucking stat increases so you can keep on making your character better. And eventually, you can go through all of the character options. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all of the dialogue options. And you're not having to recreate a character from scratch and struggle through it. Um, so, uh... I don't see the point in it. I think that I think that I, we'd all like it. I think we'd all prefer if if the option was there. But if I have to choose between them spending the however much money they get uh, per year, whatever it is, it includes a bunch of man hours. They got a bunch of studios. All those studios have man hours allocated to them. All of them have. All those studios have budgets. Uh, I'd rather see them put out games uh, and maybe in the future we can see VR come uh, when the technology is at a good price. Uh, 
right now is a horrible time to do to spend R and D uh, and development on something we don't know what the fuck's going on. Uh, to understand uh, the whole fucking this whole the whole world system, the whole global order, uh, and this is going beyond just fucking Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo. But uh, as most of you know, a ton of the product is made in China uh, because of cheap labor. And right now, uh, a bunch of things are going on. Uh, one, you everybody knows about the U.S.-China trade war. That's not even the biggest deal. The U.S. has been pulling out of the world economy and pulling out of the world order for a long time. Uh, I know a lot of people... St- a lot of people are like, oh, well, they're always at oil. We don't fucking need oil anymore. Um, and we're not 100% independent, but I think we're within uh, a million barrels per day of independence. And uh, considering that we we were, you know, 10 years ago, we needed like 15 to 17 million barrels per day. Uh that's huge. That's a huge step. Uh, so a lot of we've stepped out of that market. Uh, the only place we're really uh, dealing with is Saudi Arabia, uh, Kuwait. We've got a couple of allies in that area. Uh, we don't need. We don't really need that shit. Uh, and so when we reach the point where we're energy efficient, in fact. Uh, we're producing so much natural gas, they're burning it off because we don't have, we can't push enough through and we have the most complex natural gas system in the world and we can't push enough through. Uh, so the fracking creates the natural gas and this is not even on purpose. This is not an accident. This is just a byproduct of, of the fracking. So we're not even purposely touching our natural gas. It's why a lot of industries probably going to come back. Heavy industries going to come back to the U S because energy is going to be cheap, really cheap. And it's gone down 30%, I believe. Uh, 2007, it was getting crazy. Now it's, uh, every time a hurricane hit, like prices would double. Uh, but they're selling, uh, these fracking companies are selling uh, natural gas at like uh, $1.75. They just, they just want to get it the hell out. They're just selling hundreds uh, thousand a square cubic, or I can't remember the exact, the, I'm, I got a freaking headache coming, but, uh, they're selling at a fraction of the price, uh, of what, of what it, the, it normally sells for. It's cheaper here than anywhere else in the world by a long shot. Uh, eventually other companies will start fracking, but we're so fucking far ahead of, of where other company countries are. And, uh, I guess the French have, a pretty big field, but it's right underneath Paris, so I'm not sure how uh, how they're gonna deal with that. We've got uh, we got one up in uh, New York, California's got one, but I, I don't know about California. Anyways, uh, but Texas and then the North Central uh, U.S. right up by the Canada. Canada's got a big shale oil field as well that they can deal with. Uh, that's a whole other talk. Look up uh, Alberta, fifty first state, and you can you can learn a little bit about that. Uh, and specifically, Peter Zihine, uh, Zihan, Zihan, something like that. I can't remember that off the top of my head. Um, but we're slowly pulling out, and basically, right now, what we're doing is is uh, Trump has accelerate it what was already going to happen um so we're pulling out of the world order and what that means is we are the guarantee the guarantors of the entire world if you want to if you want to trade let's say you're uh england right and uh you want uh your comp companies in england want to buy uh clothing from textiles from china they can go 
and order it and have it shipped to England and there's no worries, right? You're going to have Somali pirates, whatever. Uh, there's always going to be a little bit of danger, but compare that to pre-World War II before we were the guarantors of the ocean. It was just empires and these empires uh, would go out and they'd find what they needed and what would they have to do? They'd have to take that land to guarantee that they would be able to keep, uh, to be able to keep getting that 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 stuff back to them, and they would. So these giant empires were built by Europe, and uh, and it was bad. It was bad for everyone uh, involved, except for the Europeans, I guess. Uh, but it was probably pretty bad for a lot of Europeans as well. Um, Especially the Germans, but that's a whole other story. They fucking, uh, they're in a really, really weird place. Um, so anyways, uh, what happens when we don't need oil anymore? I mean, why, uh, why would we bother? I mean, we we're allies with Saudi Arabia. They've got tons of our weapons and, and armored vehicles and tanks and, and uh, they're just sitting bubble wrapped in a in fucking warehouses, like not even being used. Nobody's training them. Pakistanis run their fucking uh, uh, air force. Are you kidding me? So um, you've got Iran who hates uh, Saudi Arabia, and Saudi Arabia hates Iran. Here's the big problem: uh, the people who are <laughs> who are majorities in the areas where the oil are are the opposite of the people that are in charge of the country. So you got Shiites and Sunnis and and then the Arab Ar- Arabic people and the the Persians. And so you have a lot of people that are in the oil fields in Saudi Arabia that that are more closely related religiously with the main the main government of Iran and vice versa. Uh, and I ran for I for uh, Saudi Arabia, which is really freaking uh, a bad situation. And right now, I think the only reason things haven't gone out of control is because the U.S. is there. And if uh, Iran were to just come in and do something stupid, then uh, the U.S. would go in and uh, do something stupid. Stupid people win, you know. Stupid people win stupid prizes, and. Uh, so that would be a stupid price. It wouldn't be great for us to go into Iran. It just, it just, we, it'd be a pain in the ass. Iran actually has a military, unlike every other fucking Middle Eastern country. Uh, Iraq, Iraq was getting there, but I don't know. Uh, something's gonna have to be done with Iran. I, I, uh, I don't know why the middle 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 Eastern countries haven't gotten together and just just decided that we don't want to deal with Iran anymore. Uh, they're not part of the, the the group, you know. They're not Arabic. They're Persians. Uh, there's a lot of baggage there uh, from conquered lands over multiple times, um, and uh, I don't know why they haven't at least banded together uh, and said, you know what, you guys stay the hell out of our business. You stay over there in Persia and your little your little Asian continent over here and uh, you leave us in the Middle East alone. We'll deal with our own stuff. You come over here, we're all going to fucking nail you. But uh, it's not just that. You got Israel is a big threat for Iran. But I think... That if we pulled out, Iran would would they, they, the the it would escalate super fast, um, and then oil would just fall off a cliff, uh, and then oil prices would skyrocket everywhere except in the U.S., where oil prices would stay steady uh, because we would be supplying ourselves. Uh, we wouldn't need any anybody. Uh, so think about 
think about it. So, uh, the the largest oil producers in the world, uh, the Middle East, uh, uh, I want to say Argentina. No, it's not Argentina. I don't know why I'm thinking Argentina. Uh, they're all falling apart, right? If we pull out of the global order, you got just all the oil producers are falling apart. You got people in. Uh, you got people in Africa, but here's the problem. European Union is going to need oil. So if the European Union doesn't step in and solidify the Middle East, then they've got to go into Africa. Africa is not going to give up their oil for free. So either one, uh, they go in and recolonize Africa, uh, or two, they find some other way to get their oil. Uh, And that's just going to drive oil prices up higher. Ch here's the problem. Uh, Korea, Japan, Taiwan, uh, the Philippines, uh, all these Southeast Asia Asian islands and, and groups of companies, you're going to have them all in need oil. So in uh, China's here, and you've got the, the South China Sea, right? And so China has to go through here up past India. Right, you got the little India thing. They got to go over past India to get oil. They have to go get the oil then with their military and then float the oil back while defending their oil uh, past India. Now, India doesn't have a, a fucking navy. Their navy is about as shitty as China's. Worse now. China's got a couple shitty fucking aircraft carriers. So you got India... Uh, but they've got a hell of an air force. So if you're floating past India and they send you a call, hey, you guys got to send us 10% of the oil or we're just going to bomb your oil out there. We're going to fly some planes out there. We're going to bomb your oil and you're not going to have any oil. So I think uh, <laughs> you got that problem for them, for China. And let's say Japan says, you know what? They can go up north of Japan. There's an island produces oil. It belongs to Russia. What is Russia going to do if, if Japan decides that it's theirs again? Because it used to be theirs. Uh, in fact, I believe the U.S. got pissed at that and just split the island in half. So Japan owns half of it and Russia owns half of it, which basically guarantees conflict. Um Japan can regain hold of that. They can build their navy back up. They have the uh, they have the ability to target uh, to target ships from China, um, and China really can't do nothing. So Japan can take their way out, go back around underneath Southeast Asian islands, grab the oil, and then come back around. And there's nothing. Uh, the Chinese can do about that. So they could supply their own oil. Uh, they can gain some small amount of oil from us as well. Um, so there's going to be a lot of... It, it, I don't know what the hell Canada's going to do. They're going to have to figure it out. Um, because uh, Alberta has a lot of oil. And uh, if, if, there, if, this, if this happens... Shit's going to hit the fan. But here's how it affects us. Who's making all of our shit? China's making a great deal of our stuff. Uh, now, a lot of our stuff is moving to uh, uh, Vietnam and Malaysia. Although, that's a whole different story about what's happening in Malaysia. Um, the Philippines. In a few years, a lot of that stuff can move to Mexico. If we can deal with the cartels. Um South America is a possible destination for some of it because you you want uh I think Mexico I think by 2030 I think is what I read uh the price wages cost of the cost of development of a lot of these products will be cheaper in Mexico uh the way China is going assuming their their market doesn't completely collapse and they fall apart uh because I, I think given half a chance, uh, 
the Uyghurs out in uh, who are being completely decimated right now would be more than happy to uh, to uh, rebel against China if given half a chance. And there's other groups. Uh, you can see what's going on in Hong Kong. But how this all comes back together is that uh, shit is bad uh, if we pull out of the world order, then who do we make trade deals with? You're going to have to come to us and say, hey, uh, we've got this to give you if you protect us. So we have a, we have a deal with Taiwan. Uh, it's the reason why China has not attacked Taiwan. So, hey, the U.S., you protect us. We've got this. You know, we've got this fair, this, this, this trade deal. We'll start providing you with the technology uh, uh, and the technology know-how uh, that you've, that, that's been basically exported to China over the past 20, 25 years. Uh, and we'll bring a lot of it back, reinstruct you know, bring bring some of our workers over, uh, and uh, and and basically retrain a lot of these people. Two hours ago, my wife left. Oh, I gotta move it out of the way. Um, they can offer us something, right? Uh, and then we can offer them something: ballistic missiles, maybe some naval assets, maybe some anti-ship assets. Uh, that's what they really need. And then Japan will be a trading partner, of course. Um, Australia will be a trading partner. Of course, most of our trading is done between Canada and New Mexico. Uh, then we'll make a deal with England. Uh, so I believe most of the deals are already done. Uh, our, can our deal with Canada should be done this year unless the, unless, uh, the Democrats are being assholes about it. It's got everything they want. So it should be done before the end of this year. Um, and then we'll, we'll basically be done. And then it'll all be completely focused on China. Uh, and if China wants to be able to uh, do anything and they rely on us and uh, our guarantee of a safe, safe pass, it's a lot. But if we pull out, everything's going to start moving back to 1940, pre-World pre War II. And things will get ugly real fast. And then uh, that really affects us as gamers. Uh, I'm not sure if, if, if all that's confused you. But if you look up Peter Zeihind, uh, he's got two books out, a new book's coming out. There's The Accidental Power. Read that. And then read um, The Absent Power is book two. Uh, that's about the shale revolution and why we're... We're, beco we're becoming the absent power and it's pretty startling uh, but there's a lot of he's a geopolitical analysis analyst but that's it I'm out <laughs>